In this problem, we have a differential equation, and it appears to be linear. Recall a DE is linear if you can write it in the following form. So dy dx plus p of x y equals f of x. So this is called the standard form of a linear differential equation. So we're not quite there yet. So in order to solve a linear DE, the first step is to write it like this. So to do that, we'll just divide everything by x. Divide by x, divide by x, divide by x. That will give us dy dx. And I'm going to write it like this, minus 1 over x times y. I'm doing that so we can identify um, big P. It's in front of the y. Equals, and then here we have x sine x, because one of the x's uh, cancels. The next step when solving linear differential equations is to compute something called the integrating factor. So the integrating factor is mu of x, and it's equal to e to the integral of big P of x dx. So big P is just whatever's in front of the y. So in this particular case, it's just negative 1 over x. So this is e to the integral of negative 1 over x dx. When we integrate 1 over x, we get the natural log of the absolute value of x. So this is e to the negative natural log absolute value of x. And it's tempting to cancel here, but we can't quite do it. There is a negative 1 here in front of the log. So what we do is we bring it up and write it like this. e to the natural log absolute value x to the negative 1. That's a property of logs that says if you have a number in front of a log, so if you have p ln x, that's ln x to the p. You can bring powers upstairs. Now we have cancellation. So this is the absolute value of x to the negative 1. And this is equal to the absolute value of 1 over x. So we get to decide whether or not to make this uh, 1 over x or negative 1 over x. I always just do this. I make it 1 over x. And this is only true if 1 over x is positive. In other words, if x is positive. Recall that the definition of absolute value, it's, it's a piecewise function, right? So it's x if x is positive greater than or equal to 0, and it's negative x if x is less than 0. So we do have to pick one. And I like to pick the positive one uh, just because it makes things easier. If you pick the, the negative one, you would get negative 1 over x, and then you would just say x less than 0. But that doesn't really help. Uh, you, you get the same answer anyway, so I just always make it uh, positive. So I'm going to go with that. So mu of x is 1 over x. The next step is to multiply your DE by the integrating factor. And that's why if you had chosen negative 1 over x, you'd basically have a negative 1 on each term. But then you just multiply by negative 1 again and it goes away. So it doesn't matter uh, which one you use. So let's do it. So 1 over x dy dx. Then doing it to the second term, that will give us negative 1 over x squared y. And then doing it to the third term, the x will cancel, so we're, we're just left with sine x. Let me write it in here so you see it a little bit better. So that's what we did there. And so these canceled. Okay, the next step is probably the most uh, confusing step for people who are learning um, how to solve linear DEs. Um, it's, it's from memory. So this, this entire piece here always becomes ddx of... And it's going to be your integrating factor, which in this case is 1 over x, times what you're solving for. So we're solving for y. y is our unknown function, so it's times y. And this is equal to simply, oh, uh, yeah, sine x. I was thinking, wait a minute, didn't we have an x squared here at the beginning of the problem? We did, uh, and it became an x, and then it went away again. So it's, it's slowly dwindled away, and now we're just left with, with sine. So you could check this using the uh, product rule. Recall the product rule 
says if you have f times g and you take the derivative and you think of f as your first function and g as your second function it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second so here it's the derivative of 1 over x which is negative 1 over x squared times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second so that's exactly what we have here so you can just check and and work through it you can always check so can check and again it's always it's always mu of x times whatever you're looking for every single time the next step is to integrate so integrate so integrating d dx you just get one over x y and then integrating sine um, what's a function whose derivative is sine well the derivative of cosine is negative sine so the derivative of negative cosine will be negative negative sine so yep so this will be negative cosine x and then plus c last thing to do is maybe multiply by x so we get negative x cosine x and plus cx so this would be our solution to our de um, the question wants to know what the transient terms are so transient terms are terms that approach zero when x approaches infinity well nothing here is going to approach zero cx will approach infinity and this limit here won't even exist because uh, cosine oscillates so there are none the question also asks and i didn't write this down but it does ask what is the largest interval, which I'll call i, over which the solution is defined? So if you, do, if you just look here, this solution seems to be defined everywhere. However, right here, we discovered something. x has to be positive. So the largest interval will be 0 to infinity. So this solution only makes sense if all of our work is correct. And in particular, this is the key step. The step where you get rid of the absolute value is usually where you find uh, the interval over which the solution is defined. So I hope this video has been helpful in some way. Take care.